these imbeciles have this power and are able to retain the power that they have. It's not because they are acquiring it and retaining it because of any any strength of their own. The reason they acquire and hold on to this power is because everybody else in the society is so whipped and so cowardly that they permit these things to go on. It's the same with the Obama regime. What is the difference between the Obama regime and the average American intellectually? Well, not much. As, as we've talked about before, these people are not super duper geniuses. What is, what is the difference? The difference is that the people in the Obama regime are willing to actually act and none of you out there are, are, are willing to do anything, anything to, to stand against these people, to protest against these people. And so we look at today, are you all aware that in the Ukraine there are, you know, in excess of a million people taking to the street every day, uh, protesting, um, trying to get themselves out from under the jackboot, the jackboot of Vladimir Putin and Moscow? trying desperately to, you know, assert their sovereignty and and make it clear that they want to be done with this de facto uh, domination from Moscow and these oligarchs and these corrupt politicians who are in bed with Putin who are just raping this country. I mean, sound familiar? This is this is the same dynamic that's playing out everywhere else. But the Ukrainians have fi- have had enough of this. <laughs> and are manning up and are actually taking to the streets in excess of a million people in the Ukraine taking to the streets protesting why aren't you doing that why isn't this going on in the United States why after this Obamacare fiasco why after all of this criminality as as you are as you are watching before your very eyes the rule of law being just shredded Shredded. The Constitution means nothing. You have a you have a tyrant in the executive that's just just over everyone and everything. Everybody knows exactly what the score is. Everybody knows that the entire Obamacare thing is a is a is an orchestrated an orchestrated chaos designed to basically overtake and destroy one-sixth of the economy, which will then, by extension, destroy the rest of the economy and collapse the government itself. Y- y'all sit, sit there, watch this. You know what the score is, and nobody will do anything. W- where are the people marching in the streets? Well, we can't be bothered to do that. Well, how, c- how can we do that? I have a job. I can't go march in the streets. I have a- well, what do you think? The, what do, you, do you think the people in the Ukraine, do you think the million-plus people in the streets in the Ukraine... You think none of those people have jobs? Do you think the only people who are marching in the Ukraine today are 80-year-old women? Seriously? You you don't think that there is that there's a work stoppage dynamic here? You don't think that there's a general strike dynamic going on here? And these people are facing down, you know, a a militia, a a basically a branch of the <laughs> an extension of the Putin tyranny in Moscow. And they're preparing to engage in physical confrontation if if it hasn't started already. And what, you think it's all 80-year-old women and, and people without jobs and people without families? <laughs> I, I, I don't understand what the thought process is in the, in the former United States, how you all think that this is just all going to right itself. And you can just sit and watch. But actually, actually... I kind of do. And that moves on to topic number two. And that is this Peggy Noonan article that I came across in the Wall Street Journal. Very, very interesting. She's she's building Peggy Noonan, um, allegedly conservative, but clearly not very bright because she fell hook, line and sinker for Obama and is now just kind of slowly coming around and realizing that, you know, maybe this guy isn't the second coming of Christ and all that. But she wrote an article that has an interesting premise, that has an interesting component in it. Her premise is false. Um, she's still operating on the idea that 
the Obama regime somehow actually wants to have um, a positive outcome, quote unquote, from this Obamacare mess, and that this all isn't just orchestrated chaos. And she she can't understand why it is that they would, you know, for example, launch a website that um, that doesn't have 70 <laughs> percent of the code written for it and things like that. But there's an interesting sub point in this article, and she's talking about how people in the Obama regime and in the Obama White House, that it's all just everything's just talk. And I think I'll start reading from her piece. For years, I've been told by those who've worked in the administration and those who visited as volunteers or contractors that the Obama White House isn't organized. It's just full of chatter. Meetings don't begin on time. There's no agenda. The list of those invited seems to expand and contract at somebody's whim. There's a tendency to speak of how a problem will look and how its, how its appearance should be handled as opposed to what the problem is and should be done about it. People speak airily, without point. They scroll down, see a call that's been returned, pop out, then pop in again. It does not sound like a professional operation. And this is both typical of White Houses and yet on this and yet on the same level extreme. People have always had meetings to arrange meetings, but the lack of focus, the lack of point, the sense that they are operating within accepted levels of incoherence, this all sounds actually peculiar. Um, and then she goes on to say, people probably said things like, we're experiencing some technical challenges, but we're sure that we'll be up by October. And other people said, Yes, it's important we launch strong. And others said the Republicans will have a field day if we're not. And then everyone went to their next meeting and no one did anything. And the president went off and made speeches because the doing isn't that important. The talking is, unquote. And, you know, when I read that, what struck me is that I'm not thinking about that dynamic so much in terms of the Obama regime, because like I said, the reason these people have any level of success and why evil is running rampant over the face of the earth is because these people and evil in general are, are active. I mean, Satan never rests. He never stops. He's constantly pushing, 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 going, 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 always on offense, always on offense, always being aggressive. And we are the opposite of that. We have been, because of, you know, starting with the, the infiltration of the church first and foremost, and then this whole communist infiltration of society, and again, that's all tied into the infiltration of the church as well, and we've talked about this over and over and over again, it's the de-virilization of Western civilization. It's taking all of the masculine capacity for initiation out of the culture, and this is, you know, the sitting around and talking things to death, this is an intrinsically feminine phenomenon. Let, let's just sit around and talk about something. And if we talk about it, then we're actually doing something. And we can delude ourselves into believing that we're actually doing something when, in fact, we are not. Perhaps to some extent, this is going on in the Obama regime, particularly with the, you know, the young, low level people who are just there as window dressing and they're just trying to maintain some sort of a facade that this is an actual legitimate administration, quote unquote, which of course it isn't. Um, but what what struck me about this is that this applies not so much to the Obama regime because it's actually active and pushing and going and doing things and getting basically zero resistance. The only resistance it gets is, is talk, and that's just meaningless. What I think this applies more to is, for example, the the quote-unquote Tea Party milieu and those sorts of groups which, let's be honest, is you, you people out there listening to this. I'm talking to you now. Getting together and having a meeting and talking about how bad all this stuff is and commiserating and shaking your head and wringing your hands, you need to understand that you're not accomplishing anything. We can all get, we can all get together till the cows come home and sit around and talk this to death and talk about how bad everything is, and oh, look at this, and oh, look at that. 
But you cannot permit yourself to be deluded into believing that by sitting around and talking about something, that you are actively doing something to correct it. You are not. To some extent, certainly, ideas need to be thought through, discussed, parsed, etc., etc. But that is not the end. That is, that is one of the very, very early stage activities you need to go through so that you can understand the situation you know, and in this case, understand the tactical situation so that you can formulate a a uh, a counter revolution and and a plan for doing something about this. What I see amongst all of you out there is the notion that if we just talk about all this, well, I'm, well, I'm doing something, I'm, I'm doing something. No, actually, you're not. I, I, I hate to break this to you, but you're not. You're sitting and watching and providing all kinds of color commentary. You are doing nothing to stop any of this. And I would encourage you to just stop, step outside the situation and look back as, at what has gone on over the last five years since the ascendancy of the Obama putsch regime and ask yourself, what has been done to stop any of this? The answer is nothing. The Obama putsch regime has done whatever it has wanted. It has gotten everything that it has wanted. It has achieved every objective that it has set out to achieve. It is it has experienced full, total capitulation. No, no blowback of any sort whatsoever. And not even the threat of any sort of blowback. I know you don't want to believe that and you don't want to think about that, but it's true. Even in even after the 2010 election cycle, when that big swing happened, what, what was the result of that? Did that slow the Obama putsch regime down in any way whatsoever? No. That, that Allen West class that got in, did they do anything to stop any of this? No. A few of them talked a good game. Most of them capitulated. A few of them talked a good game. But talking a good game is not the same as getting out on the field and actually doing something and m much less winning. Okay? You need, to, you need to see the distinction between these two things. It's this complete deviralization, let's just talk everything to death. Let's dialogue and encounter. Where, where are we hearing that also as well? Oh, what, what, is, <laughs> what did the Holy Father say? Whenever anybody comes to me with any sort of a problem, my response is simple and easy. Dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. Well, of course it is. Because, you know, that just accomplishes nothing, but we can delude ourselves into believing that we actually are doing something. And you say, well, Anne, what, what about the word, capital W? What about the word? Our Lord is the word. Well, let, let me read you. Let me read you Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. This is a prophecy about the coming of our Lord incarnate, the word made flesh. Here we go, Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. And as the rain and the snow came down from heaven and returned no more thither, but soak the earth and water it and make it to spring and give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be, which shall go forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall do whatsoever I please and shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. So the word isn't just talk, 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 talk. The word is potent and virile and actually accomplishes things. And that's the point. Not just this effeminate, we're just going to sit, sit around and talk these problems to death and never actually do anything. That is a, that is a huge problem. And, you know, I, I see no leadership emerging. I see none. I, I don't think you all understand that you can't just sit around passively watching this unfold on TV and think that it's going to right itself. 
it's not. If you want this to stop, you know, my, my four point plan is cable and satellite cancellation. And some of you are starting to do that, praise God. But then some, a lot of you aren't. A lot of you are sending me emails saying, oh, I saw this last night on Fox News. What, what are you talking about? You saw this last night on Fox News. Why are you still paying for that? You're, you're being played by them just as much as you are by everyone else. Oh, but it makes you feel good to sit around and watch other people. Okay, now, now we're on a derivative level here. It's not even us that's going to sit around and talk about these things and talk and talk and talk. We're now at a derivative level to where we are going to sit around in front of a television and watch other people talk about things and then convince ourselves that by sitting and watching other people talk that we've actually done something and contributed. Do you see how 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 evil this is, this, this culture of utter passivity that it's breeding it's just it's just disgusting um why why are you still paying for cable in the first place why why are you paying to have that agitprop pumped into your home why are you subsidizing all of those pornographic satanic channels which even if you never ever watch them even if you set them up for your box to block them so that your remote just skips over them and you never ever even see them a portion of your cable and satellite fee is going to, you know, when, when Al, Al Gore's channel was still in existence, although I guess it's been turned into Al Jazeera TV now, you're paying like 12, 15 cents a month for that. You're paying 12, 15 cents a month for the homosexual sodomite propaganda channel. You're paying 12, 15 cents a month for E and VH1 and keeping up with the Kardashians and MTV and all of this garbage. You're paying for that. You can't even bring yourself to cancel that. Okay, but that is step, that's point number one. Next point number two is tax strike. Well, I can't do that. I can't do that. Either you do something about this, either you get off your butt and you do something proactive about this, or it will never, ever stop. It will never, ever stop. And I posted... Um, some excerpts from an encyclical by Leo the Thirteenth not too long ago, where I went through all this, and he makes very, very clear that when laws are enacted that are contrary to the natural law and the law of God, and the, the state sets, sets up a paradigm wherein it is explicitly forcing you to choose between the state and God, well, that's a no-brainer. That's just a no-brainer. You have to get off your butt, and you have to actively, actively counter-revolt against this. Next step, step three, general strikes and work stoppages, um, marching in the streets. We're seeing this in the Ukraine right now. People have done it and do it all the time, but of course we can't do that in the United States, of, in the former United States of America, because, you know, there are no men and all, everybody keeps their testicles in a pickle jar on top of their television or their wives are carrying them around in their purse. So we can't do anything like that. And then finally, where it all eventually ends up, if you fail in the first three, which it looks like you're going to do on a spectacular level, it all ends up in a hot war counter uh, counter revolution. And while I'm on that, um, I'll write I'll write a piece up on this so that it is in writing. But I also want to remind you of the fact that hopefully you you are not revolutionaries. Okay, revolution by definition is a movement that turns away from God. What you all need to be, what you should be, and what I think I don't deny myself, is a, a counter-revolutionary. That is the person who is attempting to turn the society and the state back towards God. Okay, so when I hear you get these emails and people are talking about revolution this, revolution that, you know, no, 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 you are not a revolutionary. The Obama put regime is revolutionary. I mean, they're, they're clearly, clearly trying to move the, the state not just away from God, but to explicitly reject, turn their back on God, and declare war on him and his church. And um, it is the role of all decent human beings to then be counter-revolutionaries and to, and to 
strive against this satanic paradigm and turn the culture and eventually the state back towards God. So always remember that distinction. Please do not refer to yourself as, as a revolutionary because revolutions are just bad business. The French Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution, you do not want to be a revolutionary. We've already had the revolution. The Obama regime is the revolution. Okay? We are called to be counter-revolutionaries. So please get your get your terminology and your nomenclature right. We 